I think we have Matt in the bullpen tonight. Uh, Matt, are you ready to go? Matt Harbor? There he is. Yep. Hang on. I got to unmute. Yep. Yeah, sure. I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right. Well, let, well, folks, we're going to do gallery in a little bit, but we had an offer for Matt to do a demonstration. And we jump on that right away because this is what it's all about. Matt, go ahead. What you got? Okay. Eddie asked me to show this, how I did this texture and the, and the, and the metalizing. So that, a lot of the tools that I use primarily is this, these are, these two black ones here are Wagner knurling tools. I don't know if you guys can see the teeth on those. Okay. Uh, and I use the, I, I like the Henry Taylor decorating elf a lot. It just has these little, these little burrs that comes with it. They're just, they just pop in here. This is not a very big tool. Um, and I also use the, uh, the Sorby uh, texturing tools, uh, texturing and spiraling tools. It comes with uh, several different wheels. Um, this is a bigger tool. <laughs> um, so, and let me, I, I was playing around a little bit earlier to, and I wanted to show this, this little bit here that I was doing. I did this with the, with the texturing wheel. Um, let me see if I can get that in focus there. Just this little wheel here. I was just playing with it. And, uh, and then I, and then I put some, uh, some gilt cream on it. And then I shaped this cause I, I came off of it a little bit and got some gilt cream on here. And then I shaped the bowl down to it to make a sort of wood medallion in the, in the middle of my bowl. Um, at any rate, I wanted to show that. Um, okay. Uh, one of the, one of the things, let me switch back to this view here. One of the things that you'll notice that I've done on this piece is I've created a sort of a, a bead on the outside rim, okay? I've separated my texture from, from the outside rim. If I put this, the, the knurling tool, if I put the knurling wheel on the very edge of my piece, if I put it on the edge of my piece here, I'm gonna chip stuff out and I don't want that. Uh, so so what I, what, when I plan my piece, I plan to have a space for the, the, the texturing I apply to it. So on this piece here, I've planned to put a texture in here and I've left enough room so I can put that little bead on the outer side here and separate whatever texture I'm creating from the actual edge of the piece. Okay, and I'm gonna show both the spindle side of it. And uh, let me see if I can do this right. So I'm also going to show the uh, doing it on the face side of it, on the rim. And I, when, when I plan my pieces, I plan them to, to, that I'm going to have a space to do my texturing in. And I also plan to leave some, some chunk of the, of the material here so that I can, I can turn off any airbrushing or anything like that that I do on top of it. Any, any mistakes I make, I've got some room to uh, to turn it off, and I've got some some meat of the wood to support some pressure when I apply the texture. Okay, um, the the metalizing is done with gilt cream, and there is a bunch of different different things that all work. This 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 here was done with this Gilder's paste wax, silver. Um, I'm sorry, no, it wasn't. I did that first and then I did this other stuff on it. This is DecoArt Metallic Luster. I think I got this at Joann's. Um, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show uh, this. That doesn't show up very well, let me switch here. Um, this is uh, Goldfinger brand, okay? This is silver. It comes in other colors. So I've done some pieces that have like, this is an antique gold. Uh, that's pretty cool. And if you don't have access to any of that, this is rub and buff. This works too. And it's, it's, all, it's all done in sort of the same way. You basically, you get a little bit of it on your, on your finger, a very thin skin of it, and then you slowly wipe it across the top of the, uh, of the texture. And I'll go and show how that's, how that's done. Any, any questions at this point? 
I got one, one, one little comment, folks. We will have some gallery tonight. We normally run the show from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. It's about eleven minutes after eight o'clock Central Daylight Time. Central Time, pardon me, Doug. Uh, and uh, we will continue on like we always do, and we'll have some more gallery. But this is a demonstration offered by one of our members, and consider this: he's doing it for free for our club because he's in the club. Okay, so uh, I'm first going to show this on the face. I'm going to I'm going to leave about that much. And I'm going to put a, a, a texture in here, and then I'm going to make another bead here. I don't know if those lines are showing up. Yes, they are. Okay, all right. So um, the first thing I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to use the decorated elf on this piece here, and I'm going to cove this section where I'm going to put the texture in first. And you can do this with any number of different tools. Um, you can do it with a bowl gouge. You can do it with a spindle gouge. I'm going to use this little, all it is is a round piece of metal with a, uh, a tool steel with a, with, a, with a slant put in it. And I, it's called a coving tool. And you basically use it as a, you can use it as a scraper or a shear scraper. And you... Attention to the angle of the cut here, folks. He's using it like a scraper or a shear scraper. Yep. And if I want to, that's a scraper. And if I want to shear it, I can bring it up here like this. And now I'm getting more of a shearing angle on it. And the reason why you put a cove in is because the decorating elf works best in a cove. So, and I'm playing attention to, my, to, my, to the way my flutes are here so that I get the right angle. It's quiet, but it's cutting. Yep. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Good enough. Um, and then what I've got here is a specialized tool. <laughs> this is a paintbrush that has animal hair on it that's been cut off. You don't want to use plastic. You want to use animal hair. And I'm just using it to knock off all the, all the fuzzies in there. Um, okay. Now... Um, what I want to do here is I want to separate, I want to put my, uh, my, my valleys in here. I want to separate them. Now I can do this with a skew. I can do it with a, with a point tool. I can do it. This, this is me doing it with a skew as a scraper. I'm just going to push it in. Can that camera in. be focused? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a little shifty. Uh, I can try and zoom in and see if that, that helps. It doesn't really help very much, I'm afraid. <laughs> You'll see the texture when I when I when I put the. Uh, well, maybe I can show it here. Let me see what I've got. Hang on. The texture is basically a, sl a slant. It's put in like a spiral. I'm going to spray over this so so we'll see it. Uh, it doesn't show very well, does it? <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> There's a technical term for that, folks, but you'll see it better in a few minutes. Yep. Uh, uh, soft focus? Yeah, it's soft focus. I, I, I'm have, I've been having issues with it. Sometimes it focuses and sometimes it doesn't. So basically what I'm doing, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift. I'm going to use a point tool on this. Uh, point tool. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with the tool and, and, and separate my texture from the surrounding wood. And then I'm going to put another one out on the, on the inside to separate it from the inside of the bowl. And all I'm doing is just pushing the tool in. And my lathe just cut out. <laughs> Never a dull moment. I think if you back it out a little bit, it'll focus better. I'll try that.
Well, I like that more. I like that. <laughs> okay. More better. Basically, That's more better. Right, basically, what I've done is I put three grooves in. I put one in here, one in here, one on each side of the texture, and then one to where I'm going to turn, turn to the inside of the bowl. All right. Now I'm going to put texture on the outside on the on this section of it here. Now, for you young turners or novice turners looking at it, art is art. You don't have to duplicate what he did. We're showing you the technique he used to what he what he does. Um, and uh, with that, create your own art. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, that you know, you can even use a chatter tool, something you've created yourself. Uh, let me. For this one, I'm going to use the Wagner knurling tool. And basically what this is, is a, is a, is a diamond tooth knurling wheel. And it, it rotates freely. And, and one of the things that you want to make sure, let me back this off a little bit so that y'all can see this. Um, one of the things that you want to make sure any of these tools that rotate is you want to make sure that you've got enough room between your tool rest and your piece for the wheel to rotate freely. So you don't want, you don't want it bumping into your, into your tool rest. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight in and I'm gonna put the tool on the, on the work so that it rides and I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna count to like five in my head so that it, it, it goes deeper than, you know, goes deep enough. And then I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing that I did on, on the face. I'm gonna separate the texture from the outside and from the rest of the piece. Four or five. Okay. <laughs> so, and I can I can show that too. Now, one of the things I'm going to do next after after I after I do the do the Matt, what speed are you turning at? Well, they have a recommended speed. I was probably a little fast on that, but it didn't hurt it. This is a good solid piece of cherry that's in good shape. Um, I, I think that they recommend for the Wagner, they say uh, five to 700 RPMs. And I think that they say, but you'd have to look that up because I don't remember. I, I know when it's too fast, but I know when it's not. <laughs> Throw it in here. If you go too fast, you'll lose the detailing. Yeah, you will. If you go too slow, uh, you won't make the detailing. Or, you're, or you'll have to stick the piece into the wood for a long time. It's uh, like a test run. Yeah, let me let me uh, let me zoom in on this on this one here. See if you can see the texture. All right, there's the texture I created. Now I, I'm going to come over here with with my point tool again. And the point tool is, is just a tool that, that has three facets. Another piece of round tool steel has three facets on it. All at like, what is it? 120 degrees each or 60? Yeah, 120 degrees. <laughs> and so you failed seventh grade geometry too. You know, I use geometry every day in the shop. It's like. So I basically, I, I, put a, I put a groove on either side of my texture. Um, now what, I, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come over it with the, uh, with the airbrush. And I'm going to spray spirit stain on this. Okay. Uh, chestnut spirit stain. And the reason why I'm using stain rather than black lacquer or paint is that... Uh, Stain does not fill in the cavities of the textures I've created. Stain colors the wood without, uh, you know, ruining the textures I've created by filling them in. A lacquer or a paint will fill in, fill in the little the little grooves and textures that, that I've created. So now the smart thing to do here is to get something underneath. Your lathe bed, so I don't paint it. <laughs> so we'll do that. We're gonna clean that tomorrow. Come on. 
Ah, oh, it's just smarter to do it this way. Oh, man. So, again, this is chestnut spirit stained black. Let me put it on here so I don't spill it. Chestnut spirit stained black. And I'm just spraying it right out of the bottle. I'm not thinning it or cutting it with anything. And it doesn't take a lot. Oh, let me turn the airbrush on. And Matt, are you wearing gloves? No. You can clean that tomorrow. That's right. Denatured alcohol cleans it up. <laughs> Look at the change. Look at the change. I'll do it this way so y'all can see what I'm doing here. So the re and, and the reason why I'm doing this is staining it black is so that I can put the metallizing silver on top of it and have the black highlights show up underneath. How are you applying the stain? This is airbrush. So, and I think I got my airbrush. I think, I think the whole setup cost me around a hundred bucks at tcpglobal.com. And you can buy the, you get the hose, the compressor, uh, one of these little stand doohickeys. And uh, I got to move this somewhere else so I don't spill it on something. Um, it goes on, in, <clears throat> pardon me, it goes on in light coats. You don't want it running. Yeah, and I and I and I was moving the. You guys saw me moving the lathe as I sprayed. I always put the cap back on as soon as you can. Okay, now comes the fun. And you part. were turning the lathe by hand, right? You didn't. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I was, I was. Uh, I'm zoomed in still. Hang on, let me zoom back out. Which camera is that? They use an airbrush. It's dry before it hits, right? Well, it's not dry before it hits, but yeah, I was just turning it here using my chuck. So, and you can see that I didn't, I mean, I didn't spray my chuck. I was, I was just spraying, you know, just here. Okay. And I was probably, you know, just a few inches away. I made sure that I, that I was, that my angle was straight in. So I was getting spray in the cavity. Okay. Now the, the one I wanted to use was I'm going to use the gold finger silver on this. Okay. Goldfinger, silver. And what you do with this is you squeeze a little bit out. And, and this, is, this would really be a great place to use gloves, but I'm not going to because I'm in a hurry. Um, I'm going to put this on with this finger. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on my thumb, okay, like that. And then I'm going to put a very thin skin on my fingertip like that. Okay, and then I'm going to be very gentle and go over the top of the texture. I don't want any of this stuff to get down inside the texture. I'm just going over the top. Okay. I don't make a rag or a paper towel that can do this, folks. Yep, and then you can then you can put a little bit more on your finger and come across. And this stuff cleans up with DNA also. So, and then on, on, on the beads, less is more with this. On the beads, you want to, you know, you want to cover it up. All right, now let me show. Yeah, I got it all over my fingers. <laughs> if you put it on your nails, it'll look good to your outfit. Sounds like the voice of experience, Eddie. Yeah, I used red. <laughs> There's so, only room for one man who dresses like a woman in this club, and that's me. <laughs> Pardon me, Doug. Pardon me. You but know, you, I, I, I think we need a fashion tonight, show tonight. and a competition, guys. I don't think so, Tim. So let me try to get in close here on this. See if this zooms in enough. If not, I'll just take it off the lathe. I think I'm going to have to. This is not showing up really well. 
All right. Um, let me do that and switch to this. Can can you just spray? Can you put another coat of black on it if you don't like what you did with the with the uh, silver? Well, you you could, but I, I'm not sure. I haven't ever had to do that. Okay. Um, I, I wonder if if the stain because because when your first coat's going on, you're going on at with stain, so it's sinking into the wood, right? Yeah. So the next coat is is not going to be stain. It, it not going to be sinking into the wood. It's going to be on top of the 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 uh, the the, the gilt cream. You follow me? Yeah. So much better view. So basically, what I've done is I've gone across on the top of the texture, like with my finger, like this, and I'm just hitting the top of the texture with the gilt cream. Same is true for here. And if I come across on the other side, I guess I need more. But the tr again, the trick with, the, with putting on the gilt cream is putting it on a thin, a very, very thin skin of it on, your, on whatever finger you're using so that you don't get it down inside the cracks of your texture, inside the cavities created by your texture. Things are not flowing very well because it's only about 48 degrees in my shop after two and a half hours of heating. So, now, If you get them down in the cracks, can you brush them out? Have you tried doing that? Or um, I, have, I have been able to pick it out with a pick, but that's like enormously tedious. So it's better if you don't get it in there. Yeah, brushing won't work. It'll spread it. Yeah. Um, I, I did try wiping stuff out with DNA. Frankly, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're a little too heavy-handed with it, you're best just turning the texture off and starting from scratch. So anyway, that's how that's done. Um, any other questions on this? There's yeah. a question in the chat about dye versus stain. What's the difference? Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure. Dye works well, too, because it's soaking into the wood rather than filling in a cavities like a paint or a lacquer would. Um, I put an um, a article about it from Woodcraft in the chat, and I kind of copied and pasted a brief little explanation. It says stains are made from color pigments that stick in the grain and the pores of the wood surface, while dyes consist of microscopic particles that penetrate the wood itself. That makes it tiny enough to penetrate deep into the wood. Most common wood dyes are powders and are mixed with water or alcohol. Just a little quick, whatever. And if you have, Dad, I have a question for you. When you spray that dye, how are you gonna go back and clean that up the overspray? Well, on the on the overspray on this on, for on this piece here, I can just turn this off. Okay, you can clean it up with a scraper. Yeah, it was or, or a bowl gouge. I mean, I've like, I've got plenty of meat here. I can just turn it off. And what about the the outside? Look at look at your outside. What, yeah. How would how would you clean that up? You'd well you'd turn that. Too what what I would do it, what I would do is I would do like a, let me switch to the other piece here. Hang on. Um, let me switch to the overhead view, which is this one. Okay, on this piece here, I made the I made the, the entire texture proud. Okay, I will do the same thing here. Is I will take the bowl gouge and, and cut down, cut here, so that my texture is proud, if that makes sense, and then turn you know an eighth of an inch off across the bottom of my bowl. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the bottom line, leave leave your piece proud. Do yep. you do do all of that, and then come back and turn it again? Yep. And I will say that I learned these techniques from uh, from Nick Agar. Uh, this is stuff. This is the same way he does the Viking sunset bowls. So he is the source of this technique, as far as I know. I mean, it's not a new technique using the gilding cream, but it might be on on turnings this way. But I learned this from Nick Agar in a class with him. That spray, that spray dye, how, how deep does it go into the wood? Is it going to be easy to turn off? Yeah. You want to see that? 
Yeah, it, it turns off. I mean, it's it's. I mean, like like Jeffrey said earlier, it's you know it. Uh, it's 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 dry almost before it hits the before it hits it, the wood. It's so shallow then. Yeah, it's real shallow. It's only a thin bit of it on there. Usually, what I would do, um, my process for this would be, I would apply the 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 stain. And then I would, and, that, and then I would turn it off, turn turn things off to where I wanted to. And then I, the last thing I would do would be to apply the the metalizing the gilt cream, okay. Um, and the reason why I'm doing it that way uh, is because the paint's already done. And and then once you're done, I you know I'll spray lacquer on it. Uh, let's see here. So. Just to show you that the oversprays, all it, it's all gone, okay. And I took, you know, I did, I didn't take much off there at all, okay. We'll have a little curly cues on the tool rest, folks. You could also always just tape off. Yep. Um, your piece. I don't know if someone already said that. I was busy looking up that Nick Agar guy. Anyways, I put both uh, his website and a YouTube video in the link for y'all to check out um, who he was referencing. Thank you, Kim. You know, Doug was impersonating you a few moments ago. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, Matt. And I looked so good. Yes, sir. Yes, hey, sir. Matt. Is there a restriction on what kind of finish you can put over that embellishing wax? Um, I usually spray lacquer on it. Uh, if you're spraying lacquer, uh, you, you always do light coats so that you don't interfere with the paint or the damn it. Um, let's see. You always uh, you want to always spray light coats so that you don't interfere with the paint or whatever texture you've applied. Um, I've had success spraying uh, clear poly also. Uh, again, light coats. You want to get at least two, three co light coats on there before you know very light coats before you try to uh, before you try to increase the depth of your of your finish. Thank you. Yep. Like, like, like missing it. Lacquer is great yeah. for missing it. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I mean, how I would do it is I'm at least a foot from the piece and I'm spraying before I hit the piece. You know, I'm not putting heavy coats on. Spray, 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 and I'm done. You know what I'm saying? And that can be with a rattle can or airbrush or whatever you, you choose. Uh, just remember, the, the closer you get, the more you put on, and that might not be a good condition. Right. Yeah. You and and the further away, you know, if you're doing HVLP, then then that uh, that might be a better way to do it too. Um, I, I like the Minwax products. I've had good success with those. Uh, so Minwax uh, spray poly and and Minwax spray lacquer work real well for me. Uh, the Deft spray lacquers work good too. Um, I took a page from Holly Denny's book and and did some some spray sanding sealer also, which was fairly successful if you want a satin finish. Matt, can you show us that little air compressor that came with that airbrush? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, let me switch over here. Da, 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 da. Let me switch to this one. And let me see if I can. <laughs> Nothing but technical dif difficulties. In the wrong camera. Hang on. It's like a bunch of guys sitting in the parking lot talking on the back of the truck. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, the compressor's on the floor there. <laughs> All right, it, it's it's a, is, it's a is it's that a, a toy or is that an actual compressor? That yeah, that's tiny. that's the compressor. <laughs> Did you, you get that at Toys R Us or <laughs> you got it out of a cereal box? What's going to be when it grows up? <laughs> all right all right hey, smart hey, alex it's this Let's big talk. okay it's this big and it works fantastic i've had it for 10 years matt you said that came as a kit the compressor and the air uh, in the air gun huh? yes tcp global has a kit for around 100 bucks that contains the compressor the hose 
an airbrush and they now when i bought it that's all it came with now it comes with an instructional dvd and like six paints so uh you know you can you can get started with a whole bunch of stuff with that kit and it's around 100 bucks all right it Kim, can you throw that in our chat i didn't hear that question that's tcp.com it's tcpglobal.com i believe okay somebody throw that in chat Please. Well, Doug, I, I mean, Matt, we really appreciate your help tonight in a demonstration. We have got a couple more from you in the future lined up, and we very much appreciate it, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Happy to be happy to help out. Help people learn stuff. Thank you. All right. Matt is from Michigan. Uh, what do you said? High of 48 today or the high in the shop? No, today? no, it's it's 48 in my shop right now after two, three hours of heating. <laughs> And, and I, 